Today you are learning English with Money Heist or La Casa de Papel. Before we get started though, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and bell down below because every week there's a new video here on the channel designed to help you understand your favorite movies and TV series without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without subtitles. So what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single new video. Now let's get started. So Tiago, I'm really excited because I just saw an announcement, probably by the time this video is live, it will already be on Netflix, but it's a new series from the universe of Money Heist or La Casa del Papel for people who watched it in Spanish. You know, Ethan, to my shame, I have to admit that I have never seen Money Heist. It seems to me that oh, it's one of those shows that are super popular. Everybody mm -hmm. has seen it and talks about it, but I haven't seen it. I feel like you would really dig it. It'd be right up your alley. Yeah. All right. Uh, what is the, the premise? Uh, very briefly. So this new series is Berlin, which is about one of the characters. And it's actually, it's a spin-off, obviously, because it's not a continuation of the original series. The premise of Money Heist, it's in the name. It's a heist. And a heist, there's like Ocean's Eleven is a famous one. It's basically where a bunch of people come together and come up with a plan to rob a bunch of money or something valuable. The premise of this one is this brilliant guy called the professor brings together a bunch of criminals to rob the, what would you call it, treasury maybe? The place where they mint the currency for the country. So in this case, it happens in Spain. Awesome. What does it mean to mint currency? If you mint a currency, you're creating it in a legal way. Like printing the bills, right? Like that? Exactly. So I grabbed a really iconic scene, and this is the English version, of course. So I thought we could check it out. Yeah, let's do it. So a little bit of context here. This is a scene where we're introduced to all of the members of the heist. And the thing that they do is they have code names so that they're not using their actual names for anonymity. The code names they use are cities. So this became very iconic that each of the characters is a little bit like the city that they have the code name of. And that's how I started calling myself Tokyo. The one looking at my ass is Berlin. A wanted man all over the world. 27 heists, jewelry stores, auction houses, and armored vehicles. His biggest score, the Champs-Élysées in Paris, 434 diamonds. He's like a shark in a swimming pool. You can swim with him, but you're always nervous. He was in charge of the heist. The one coughing is Moscow. The first thing he dug was a mine in Astorias. Later, he figured out that he'd make more money by digging upwards. Six fur shops, three watch shops, and the Rural Credit Union of the Vilas. He's an expert with any industrial tool. The one behind Moscow is Denver, his son. Drugs, busted teeth, broken ribs. He's the king of bar fights. Pure, hot-blooded. A ticking time bomb, perfect for a heist. Man, this just makes me so nostalgic. It makes me want to watch it again. How many seasons are there, the original Money Heist series? I believe five, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. And we can see Berlin is one of the first characters introduced. So he's who the new series will be about. And there's some really nice pronunciation here. So she says that he's a wanted man all over the world. If you viewers paid attention, sorry, she didn't say wanted, which is how most of us would learn in school. But when we have this NT in many words, we'll drop the T and it becomes wanted, a wanted man. That line also reminds me of those old Western movies, cowboys mm -hmm. and everything, wanted. Yeah, if there is a criminal that the, the sheriff is looking for, he's a wanted man. They show each of the characters with the mug shot, right? That's what we call when they take those pictures in front of that diagram that has their height. She talks about his biggest score was the Chandelier, where he stole a bunch of diamonds. What does that mean, a score in this case? In this context here, I would imagine his biggest heist or mm -hmm. his biggest experience robbing a bank. Mm -hmm. That was his score and being successful. And we'll use this as a verb too, like I scored tickets for the concert this Saturday, meaning I got a hold of them, which doesn't mean I, in this context that I stole them. It just means I was able to successfully get a hold of them. Something interesting here, next she talks about Moscow, who was a miner and he learned to dig upwards so he could break into places. Why does she say he digs or he dug upwards instead of just saying he dug up? That is actually a question I wanted to ask you because <laughs> uh, <laughs> because upwards is in the 
in this upward direction. But mm -hmm. in the context here, does it mean that usually the safes in banks, you have to dig upwards to get to them or anything like that? It'd be one way, right? Is to go underground and then dig up. It's exactly that. The words, it's for the direction. Upwards, downwards, forward, backward, showing the, the movement. And if we just say dig up, that's actually a phrasal verb, which means to take something out of the ground. Like if you dug up some treasure on the beach. And then next she talks about Denver, who's a bit of a troublemaker and she uses a lot of nice expressions with him. Busted teeth, pure hot blooded, taking time bomb. Do you want to go through some of these, Tiago? Yeah, busted teeth is, you know, you, you don't have teeth basically, or you have <laughs> broken teeth because I imagine he, this guy gets into fights a lot. Mm -hmm. So maybe he doesn't have all his teeth in place. <laughs> busted means broken, right? So you could say you have a busted watch, for example. Oh, that reminds me also when you catch somebody doing something wrong, mm. right? You can say busted. Busted. Can't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I like this one, hot blooded. He's a mm -hmm. hot blooded man. I guess in this case, he's violent and aggressive. Yeah. His blood is hot with anger and intensity, right? Yeah. And we'll use it more casually too, just to say that someone, they wear their emotions on their sleeve. Could be another way of saying it. They're easily made angry. They're easily go to tears even. They're they're hot blooded. They, they really feel their emotions. There are a couple of songs I remember with that hot expression, blooded. hot blooded. That's <laughs> Foreigner, I believe. Yeah, classic yeah. rock band. Uh -huh. How about ticking time bomb? Yeah, this one, I love how visual it sounds and I can picture that in my mind. Imagine a bomb that is counting down before exploding and the clock is ticking. So when you refer to a person as a ticking time bomb, that person could explode in anger and aggressiveness at any time. So you don't want to mess with that person because mm -hmm. the person is very unstable emotionally. And she says perfect for a heist, but for me, that sounds like it could screw everything up, but people have to watch to see what happens. I'm sure you've been learning many new words in this lesson, right? But let me ask a question. Do you think you'll be able to remember all of these new words a week from now, maybe two weeks from now? Well, if you don't review these words again and again, you will likely forget them. This is really frustrating, isn't it? When you learn a new word or expression here with us, but then when you go out there in the real world and start talking to people, those words just don't come to you. You forget them. Well, there is a very powerful technique that you can implement called space repetition. Space repetition is a learning technique that involves reviewing and revisiting information at increasing intervals over time. The basic idea is to expose yourself to the information you're trying to learn in a way that optimally reinforces your memory. This is an advanced technology that works with your brain's natural tendency for memorization using intelligent flashcards. As someone who works in English, I can't stress enough how important it is to have an ample vocabulary. And we have made it easy for you to incorporate space repetition in your learning with the Real Life English app. With the app, you can learn tons of words, phrasal verbs, and expressions with our advanced technology that helps to review the words you're trying to remember by presenting the new vocabulary to you at strategic times, so you can never forget the new words and expressions you're learning from this podcast ever again. Thousands of learners just like you already use the app to get confident, natural English. So if you want to go from feeling like a lost, insecure English learner to becoming a confident, natural English speaker who actually remembers the new words you learn, download the app today. Rio, he's my weakness. He's the Mozart of computers. He's been coding since he was six and knows everything about alarms and electronics. As for everything else, it's as if he was born yesterday. And there you have twins, Helsinki and Oslo. Even the most sophisticated plan needs soldiers. And what's better than two Serbs? Maybe they can think, but frankly, we'll never know. <laughs> Nairobi, a hardened optimist. She's been counterfeiting banknotes since she was 13. Now she's our quality control manager. She may be crazy, but she's a lot of fun. The professor, no criminal record, no registration, hasn't renewed his ID since he was 19. For all intents and purposes, a ghost, but a very intelligent ghost.
All right, so she calls Rio the Mozart of computers. What does that mean if we say someone is the someone of something? I guess Mozart is from the composer, I imagine,、mm-hmm. and he was considered to be a genius, composer, prodigy, so even a prodigy. That's a young person who is very good at something, right? Yeah, has like a natural. God-given talent. He's the motor of computers. He's a computer genius, even、mm-hmm. though he might be young. Could say like someone is the Michael Jordan of slamming it on the guitar. Ah, <laughs>、uh, okay. You you pick somebody who is really accomplished in their、mm-hmm. field, and you use that person as the the grade of、mm-hmm. talent. The top of the top, creme de la creme. La creme de la creme.、Like、<laughs> We have some connected speech next. I love this. She says he's a genius with computers, but for everything else, it's as if he was born yesterday. It's a lot of connected speech there. We have a lot of function words, these smaller words, that are all being reduced and linking together. It's as if he was. So we have the s from it connects onto as, it's as. Then the end of as connects onto if, as if, as if. The end of if connects onto he, if he. If he was has that schwa sound, so it's also a reduced word. So it's as if he was born yesterday. All those first words are linking together. It's as if he was born yesterday. So she calls the plan sophisticated. What does that mean if something sophisticated? Something sophisticated is full of intricacies, minor details. It's not so easy to get right. It's complex. It's sophisticated. And she calls Nairobi a hardened optimist. Do you know what that means in the context? I haven't heard this collocation often, but like a hardened criminal. Yeah, I have heard a hardened criminal. That's an、mm-hmm. interesting one. Would it be? Correct me if I'm wrong, but would it be a criminal who knows he's a criminal and shows no remorse whatsoever? Like that person is, you know, beyond repair. Let's say that could be the case. I think of it as someone who's did some crime, went to prison, and the American prison system is infamous for making. Criminals worse than when they went in、mm-hmm. because they're just surrounded by other criminals who make them be hardened, make them、mm-hmm. embrace that criminality, embrace bad choices. But in a hardened optimist, it's like someone who's been forced in their life to become more and more optimistic. It's a, it's a bit of a、yeah. strange expression. Is it common to say this? A hardened no, optimist. I don't think so. <laughs>、yeah. But I like the, I like the language there. And she's been counterfeiting banknotes. So we mentioned minting banknotes, minting money. What does it mean to counterfeit banknotes? To produce fake banknotes, correct? Exactly. Yeah, banknotes being paper money, right? And then she gets to the professor, the leader. There's some really nice expressions here. So he hasn't renewed his ID. What is an ID in this case? It's your identification document. That、mm-hmm. proves you are a citizen of such or such country. That's interesting because different countries have different name for this, right? ID. So in the states, we would call it an ID. And for all intents and purposes, a ghost. What does this expression mean? For all intents and purposes. You know, I have seen that line, that phrase, a lot, and I understand what it means. But to put it into words, would it be similar to as far as everybody's concerned? That's it. Yeah, it's kind of like the summary of information for yeah, as far as we're concerned. Amazing. So, why don't we watch that again? And we're not going to give you the subtitles this time, so you can really test your listening. Let's go. And that's how I started calling myself Tokyo, the one looking at my ass is Berlin, a wanted man all over the world. Twenty-seven heists, jewelry stores, auction houses, and armored vehicles. His biggest score: the Champs Elysees in Paris, four hundred and thirty-four diamonds. He's like a shark in a swimming pool. You can swim with him, but you're always nervous. He was in charge of the heist. The one coughing is Moscow. The first thing he dug was a mine in Astoria. Later, he figured out that he'd make more money by digging upwards. Six fur shops, three watch shops, and the Rural Credit Union of the Villas. He's an expert with any industrial tool. The one behind Moscow is Denver, his son. Drugs. Busted teeth, broken ribs. He's the king of bar fights. Pure, hot-blooded. A ticking time bomb, perfect for a heist. Rio, he's my weakness. He's the Mozart of computers. 
He's been coding since he was six and knows everything about alarms and electronics. As for everything else, it's as if he was born yesterday. And there you have the twins, Helsinki and Oslo. Even the most sophisticated plan needs soldiers. And what's better than two Serbs? Maybe they can think, but frankly, we'll never know. <laughs> Nairobi, a hardened optimist. She's been counterfeiting banknotes since she was 13. Now she's our quality control manager. She may be crazy, but she's a lot of fun. The professor, no criminal record, no registration. Hasn't renewed his ID since he was 19. For all intents and purposes, a ghost, but a very intelligent ghost. Global citizens, thank you very much for learning with us. But you should know that this was just a short clip from the full lesson. The full lesson is available on the Real Life English app. So come on, download the app and continue listening there. You're going to learn even more cool stuff. See you soon.